we're going to use a couple points as the world in a Big Bang animation. So like with all Big Bang animations, we're going to need a function for drawing a world as an image. That's step two of the design recipe, the signature purpose and header. The next step, step three, is to write some examples. This is extra important for functions that take complicated union data as input because we should make sure that we have examples for every kind of input. We have three kinds of input, so we're going to have to write at least three examples. Each example, which I will write as a check expect, is going to say what an input could be and what the output should be. So the input to draw a couple of points might be CP0. And then we have to decide what does it mean to draw the make none kind of couple of points. Well, we just basically want a blank background. So uh, I'm going to make a blank background. And before I forget, I better remember to pull in the required function empty sync from the image library. Okay, so that's one example. Let's write another example. After all, we have two more kinds of couple points that we have to write examples for. So what if draw couple points gets CP1 as the input? Well, we should put some kind of a marker, like maybe a red dot like you saw uh, on the image. So I'm going to use paste image for that. And I'm going to make a red dot, maybe like this. And then I'm going to put it at, well, CP1 contains this point. So the coordinates are 50 and 100. I'm going to put it on top of the empty thing 500, 500. That's the, the blank space that I have. So this is my second example. Now you can start to see that things are getting a little bit repetitive because for one thing, I keep repeating the empty sync 500, 500. So let's turn that into a constant definition. I'm gonna cut that and replace it with a word background. I'm also gonna cut this and replace it with a word background. And what's a background? Well, let's define what a background is. Let's define what the background is. Okay, we need at least one more example because we have a third kind of a couple of points that we have yet to write an example for. What does it mean to draw CP2 here? Well, then we need something with two dots on it. How do we make something with two dots on it? Well, we could start with a background, put one dot on it, that's an image. And then on that image, we put another dot on it. So we need to chain two calls to place image because we have to first use place image to put one dot on background and then use the output of that place image as an input to the next place image to put another dot on. That's a little complicated. And this is the point where I usually think, oh, I should figure out how to make that final two dot image in a separate tab. Because look, here I'm in the middle of writing this example. If I just start playing with my image making expressions, um, it's, it's going to be confusing to Dr. Racket. Uh, I'm still in the middle of writing a check expect and Dr. Racket is just going to complain that I haven't written uh, the check expect completely yet. Um, so then I'll be tempted to comment out everything and then I'll forget what I will comment out. And when I go back to uncomment out the things I was going to you know, fail to uncomment out a few lines or uncomment out a few extra lines and then my code is going to mess up, it's going to run and then I'm going to forget to test my code and then my code won't work. So all of that trouble can be avoided if you do that work in a new tab. In a new tab, it's all fresh. You don't have to worry about your being in a, 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 in the middle of a check expect, um, but we do need to copy things like the definition of background that we are still in the middle of uh, using. Okay, so right now I just want to write some image 
that has both to uh, both 3080 in it and 5100 in it. Okay, so the idea is I'm first going to put that circle at 5100 on top of background. Let's try this first, just to make sure that it works all right. Ah, okay, so that's this image, okay. But that's not enough because I need a second dot at 3080. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole image and use it as an input to place image. So I'm gonna put use place image, and this is my first input to place image. I'm gonna put a dot at 3080 on top of this other image. Okay, better remember to close the outer place image. Now we're chaining two calls to place image. We're using the output of the inner place image as an input to the outer place image. And the result is a single image with two dots in it. So this seems to work well. I just have one more complaint about this code, which is that we're really starting to repeat the phrase circle five solid red a lot. So I'm gonna replace that with the word marker. I'm also gonna replace this with the word marker. And then I'm gonna define the word marker to be what I just cut. Okay, this, is, this has made my code shorter. It's also made my code easier to change. If I decide to use a different marker, maybe not a red solid dot, but a blue triangle or the picture of um, a bottle of water, or whatever it is, I could do that. In fact, right now I have so much space that I'm going to join some lines. Okay, so now we're done with this formula in a separate tab where we have all the room to explore different ways to draw two dots. And now I could copy my work, which I just tested by hitting run, back into my original uh, couple points work. Okay, so I'm going to paste that here in the middle of the example I was working on and then hit right paren just to close this check expect. And I better not forget to take the marker definition that I made and also move it back into my main piece of code. In fact, I could use this marker definition in my older example as well. Okay, so now I have written three examples. That's the minimum number of examples I should write because again, we have three kinds of couple points and we need to write examples for each kind of input. We could write a couple more examples. Here's one. What if I'm going to draw a different couple of points like CP3. CP3 is an example of a couple of points that we defined earlier here. Well, it's going to be fairly similar to CP2, but not quite the same because the couple of points have moved. They have moved to 200, 300, and 3080. So I'm just going to change the numbers to 200, 300, and 3080. Okay, so those are my examples. That's a good set of examples. Making those examples really helped us um, understand better what draw a couple points have to do. That's step three of the design recipe. Let's move on to step four, the template. Well, the template is basically done because we've already written a general template for processing a couple points in any way. Here's that template. And all we have to do to that template is to write, instead of process couple points, the name of the function we're actually designing. Draw couple points. So that's a template. Note that this template uses process point. So it suggests that we might want to have a helper function for uh, processing a point. Here, I guess it probably would be a helper function that draws a point. We'll see that when we get to those two cases of the definition. Now let's fill in this template. We're in step five of the design recipe now. The num case is relatively easy. 
because we have an example that tells us exactly how to fill in, so I'm just going to copy it. The one case is a little bit more complicated. Here's our example for the one case. So we better use place image. And it looks like we're going to have to use the content of the point. That's not so surprising. The point has two numbers. And we could say, well, a process of the point is to pick out the x, or a process of the point is to pick out the y. And that will be all right. You know, we could write a definition like, well, I'm basically following the example here. The example says place image. Uh, in fact, the, place, the example says place image marker, so I'm just going to copy that into my um, definition. And then uh, for process point, again, maybe the processing I'm going to do to the point is to pick out the x and pick out the y coordinate of the point. So uh, instead of process point, I will just change that to point x, which is a courtesy function we got by defining the point structure and point Y, the other currency function that's a selector or accessor. And finally, the example says background, so I could just put that here. So this will be a correct way and relatively straightforward way to fill in the definition using the example we have in the corresponding case. Uh, but it's not really, I mean, it is following the template, but the template really sort of motivates us to do better. The template says, hey, you probably need to process two points in the next case. And it might even be the same kind of processing because we're going to be drawing two points in pretty much the same way, although on top of different images. So this is really making us wish for a function, a helper function that just draws one point. So what does that helper function look like? Well, it's going to take a point as input for sure. But also, if you remember from our experience making this example of drawing a couple of points that has two points in it, it's going to put the same marker not only at a different place, but also on top of different images. Because sometimes we're going to put the marker on this image. Sometimes we're going to put the marker on this image, which is a different image. So we're really wishing for a function, let's call it draw point that takes two inputs, a point, which might vary between 3080 and 5100, and also an image. And it's going to return an image. So it's going to draw a point, in fact, draw the given point on the given image. We have to be able to give this function a different image to draw on in order to chain calls to this function to draw multiple points on a background. Let's call the inputs P for the point, and the image, let's call it BG for background, even though it may not be a totally empty background, it may already have 10 markers on it, we just want to put the 11, so it might already have one marker on it, we just want to put the second on top. Okay, so that's step two of design recipe for the draw point function. Now we kind of have to keep track of where we are in the design recipe for each function, because for the draw couple of points function, we're in step five, we're writing the definition already. Whereas for the draw point function, we're still at step two. We just finished writing the signature and purpose and header. We haven't even written any examples yet. Okay, so that's a different stage we're at. And we could be at different stages of the design recipe for different functions at the same time. So maybe you want to take out a you know, day planner and, and pencil in when to do the design recipe for this function versus that function. Just keep track of what you've done. Okay, so again, we're writing the definition for draw a couple points, but in the middle of doing that, we find ourselves wishing for a function draw point. So we went ahead and wrote down the signature purpose the header for that other function we're wishing for. In fact, we could express our wish a little bit more concretely by doing step three, by writing some examples for draw point. Because every place where we want to use draw point in draw couple points is a place where we get an example for draw point. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you think about how we're going to use draw point and draw couple points, here's, here's how I would like to be able to use draw point. I would like to just say draw point, some point, background. This is how I would like to use draw point inside draw couple points. And I would like it to produce 
this image. Let's use that to write our first example for draw point. If we have a point, which is the point stored inside CP1, what is that? That is this point. If we have this point and we draw on this EG, we want to get this output from draw point. So that's our first example for draw point, which is really motivated by how in the middle of of defining draw couple points we are wishing for this new function draw point. Let's think about the two case for draw couple points, which we've written two examples for in these places, and write corresponding examples for the draw point function that we're currently wishing for. How are we going to use draw point in draw couple points? If we use draw point for process point, the first thing we're going to do is to draw the second of the two points on top of the background. This is the first thing we're going to do is going to draw a point like 5100 on top of the background. So in the case of CP2 as the input to draw a couple of points, we're going to make this image. But that's actually the same example we already wrote. So we already have an example for that. Another example we might have is what we do with the first of the two points. We're going to draw that point on top of the result of drawing the second point on the background. So we're going to chain calls to draw point like we are chaining calls to place image in the example and we're going to use the chaining to achieve the effect of having two markers on um, a background. So if we already have the output from the inner draw point, we're going to put a marker at 3080 on top of this BG. And that should give us the final result that we want of both draw point and draw a couple points, because after all, the last step of drawing a couple points is to draw a point. Okay. So you see how we were using the example we wrote for draw a couple points and how we're hoping, how we're wishing to use draw a point inside draw a couple points to write the corresponding example for draw a point. So that's actually a fair collection of examples for draw point. We could write more. We could go through this other example, draw a couple points, and write corresponding examples for draw point. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, not do that for now. Um, and uh, oh, look, we are done with writing the definition for draw a couple points. We've finished filling in the template. There are no more dot dot dots left. And I think this is going to work as long as we finish designing draw point, which we have not. We're done with defining draw a couple of points, except we have to test the code. That's step six of the design recipe, but we cannot test the code until we finish designing draw point. So let's design draw point. We are at step three for draw point. We have written some examples, and now we also need some template for draw points. We have that template already because that's just the template for processing a point. We wrote this template earlier, and all we have to do now is to rename the template from process point to draw point. And now we can use this template to finish defining draw point. Except we also need to add the extra input image. Remember, whereas process point is just a template for a function that takes a point as input, here we have the desire to design a function that takes two inputs, not just a point, but an image. So the image is kind of along to the right, but we have to add it to the header of the function definition. Okay, if you look at the example, you just see that we have a point which contains two numbers. So those two numbers are 5100 in the example, and here in the template, it gives us how to access these two numbers. So this is basically 50, and this is basically 100 when it comes to this first example we wrote. So I just have to copy the rest of the example. And also the example says, 
Well, if you have a background, then use a background here. If you have this BG, then use a BG here. So in both the first example and the second example, the fourth input to place image is BG. Here is BG because background is BG. Here's BG because this place image result for having put 5100 on the background is the BG. So we have to use a put BG here. Not background, BG, which may or may not be background. Okay. Now it looks like we are done designing both draw couple points and draw point, except we have to test the two functions. That's step six of the design recipe. So let's test the functions. Ah, I have to comment out the header. Actually, I'm just going to delete the header because Dr. Racket is confused about whether it should be running a header or my definition. It should really be running my definition. Let's try again. Aha, uh -huh. here again, I have to delete the header. Ooh, I have some failing tests. Ooh, that's weird. I have some place image expects four arguments, but found only three. Hmm, I wonder if where that error is found. Well, it looks like that error was caused when the computer tried to run this test. So if I try to run the same test in the interactions window, I should get that same error. Ah, yes, I do. And this time the computer is telling me where place image encountered the error. Oh, I made a mistake when filling in the template from the example. I did not copy the word marker. I should have also copied the word marker. Now I'm using place images for inputs, which it always requires. Great, good thing I tested. Let's try again. Now my test passed, not just for draw point, which I just fixed, but also for draw couple points. And the good thing about having defined a helper function like draw point is that in the future, including in your exercise, we can use the same draw point function and never worry again about failing to pass the marker to place image.